Good morning. This morning we're going to tackle the naughtiest, the thorniest of all human conundra. Should I cancel my LSAT score? Well, here's the thing. That's a whole dilemma that's wrapped up in your psychological state of mind, uh, your individual goal set, and uh, the relative probability of your having achieved whatever score it is that would make you happy. But from all of that uncertainty, we are going to achieve a resolve, and we'll do it using reason, and we'll do it using logic, and we'll do it using math. Like this. Before we can even ask the question of whether or not we should cancel our LSAT score, we have to establish the ground rules. I mean, under what conditions should a person cancel her score? And obviously the answer to that question is something like when she didn't do as well as she could have. Right? And it is something like that. But let's put a finer point on it to help you think this through. Start like this. Instead of thinking about what score would make you happy, instead of thinking about what score would make you jump up and down, run through the streets with an open bottle of champagne, spewing everyone in your path, think instead in these terms. In about three weeks, you're going to get an email from LSAC. The subject line of that email is going to say, your LSAT score. The body of the email will say, Dear Dave Hall, LSAC number L261092, your LSAT score was... And there's a number there. Now, when you get that email and you open it up and you see that number, don't ask right now what number will make you feel awesome. Ask instead what number will make you feel... Okay. Like this. Let's imagine a scenario in which um, I am an LSAT student. I have been scoring on my recent practice test, 166, 167. So on test day, I really want to see a 167 or 168. That's my, that's my real target. I mean, I feel like if I can do that, I will have achieved my best score possible. But that score is not necessarily my goal score. Because really, for me, if I get that score email, and it says that I've got a 163, I'm not going to be super stoked about that. I will have underperformed my... Uh, my potential, but at the same time, I can live with that. The schools that I want to go to, a 163 puts me right near the median. I've got strong other factors. I'm going to write a kick-ass personal statement, and I'm going to hire Dave to help me with it, and so we'll edit it until it's sharp enough to cut paper. So if I get a 163 back in that email, I'm not going to be overjoyed, but I will be okay. That means that my real goal score is a 163. Obviously, your goal score may be different from mine, and the way in which you arrive at it may be different from the way in which I arrived at mine. I am not suggesting that your actual goal score should be four points below your expected score. I am asking you to think about what number will really make you think, I can live with that. And for me, 163. I can live with that. All right, now I have to do some clear-eyed assessment to decide how close I got to that 163. Here's how I'm going to do it. First, we talk about raw points. To get a 163 on most tests is going to take you about 80 questions right. There are some tests where you can get a 163 with as few as, a, as a 77 questions, and some tests that may take you as many as 83, but on balance, it's going to take you about 80 questions. Now, with that in mind, Knowing that we need to get about 80 questions right to have reached that goal score, let's start thinking about that performance. And I'm going to think about it as linearly and as systematically as I can. In the first logical reasoning section, I remember that that section was tough for me. So here's what I want to do. First, I want to separate all the questions I didn't answer. And that, que and that section was rather difficult for me, and there were five questions that I just didn't answer. Uh, I didn't have time to work them. So for those five questions, I, I expect to get one of them right because I guessed D for Dave on all five. So for my guesses, I got zero or maybe one question right just by guessing on those last five that I didn't answer. That left me with 20 questions that I did answer. It was a tough section for me. So honestly, of those 20, 
I mean, I slowed down, relaxed enough to answer them as well as I could, but there were three or four of them that I'm really not confident on. Now, I never miss all of the questions that I'm not confident on, so let's say there's four that I wasn't sure of. I got at least one of those right. So that means I'm somewhere, and maybe all of them right, but my range is somewhere between 17 and 20 points on the questions that I answered. All right, now we're getting somewhere. The second logical reasoning section was much easier for me. And so in that section, I answered 23 of the 25 questions. I only left two unanswered. So again, I have to get really lucky. I'm just going to call that a zero by guessing, you know? Uh, I might have gotten one, but that would be really lucky to get one out of two. Uh, on the other hand, those 23 that I answered, I mean, there were like two of them that I wasn't sure of. So, I mean, even if I'm being super conservative and I missed both of those, I got between 21 and 23 points in that section. The reading comprehension. For me, reading comprehension has always been my downfall, and uh, I really only got through three passages. I mean, there was one passage I just did not answer any of the questions in. So there's seven questions that are just up for grabs. I guessed on each of them. I should get one right. If I'm a little bit lucky, I could get two right. So my guessing is one to two points. My answers, though, I answered 21 of those 28 questions, and typically I miss one question per, uh, one question per passage. And so I figure out of those 21 points, I got somewhere between 18 and 20 of them right. Um, you know, by just determining I'm going to do these three passages and do them well, I do end up doing them pretty well. I'm just too slow to do more than that. So I got somewhere between 18 and 20 points in the reading comprehension. Finally, the games. The games, I owned that shit. I did everything that Dave told me to do in all of his videos. And I just went in there and I took it. It was mine. It belonged to me already before I even started. So I just took it. I didn't guess on anything. I answered every question. And I'm a human being, so I may not have been perfect. I may have made a, I may have made a careless mistake. But that's the only way I missed a question there. I didn't have any guesses. I got 22 or 23 questions right in the game section. And now we will add those numbers up. And this is going to illustrate one of the things that's most important for you to realize when you're thinking through whether or not you should cancel your score, is that you'll never feel as bad about the test as you do in those moments right after it. So if I can get you thinking more clearly about your performance, you may find that you did better than you might originally have thought. We'll see. All right, so at the very worst, I got 17 plus 21 plus 18 plus 22, so that's 40, 61, 68, 79, or 78 points plus one at the very worst, by guessing. So my low end here is 79 raw points. My high end, on the other hand, 20, 40, 60, 86, 88, 89. My high end is 89 points. So even though, once I, right after I finished the test, I was kind of feeling like it had been rough, when I think about it more clearly, I don't think this was a bad test for me. I think I did pretty close to my real, original uh, capability score. You know, that 166, 167. I may have done as badly as about a 163, maybe even a 162. But it's more likely that I did 166, 167, maybe, one, maybe 168. Given these numbers, I've got a decision. I'm not canceling that score. But what if the numbers had gone the other way? I mean, what if I had looked at it and I had found that it was likely that I had scored somewhere between 75 and 79 points? <sighs> That's when it really gets murky. I mean, we've decided that 163 will make us feel okay. But what about this? Let's thicken the plot. What if you got a 161? You don't feel okay about that. That's way below your capability. But now the question is, would you trade the next two or three months of your life 
you know, which you'll be giving up doing LSAT prep in order to gain back three or four LSAT points? It's a tough call, and I'll put it this way. Um, for almost anybody, if you are going to do five points better or more, then it is worth taking the test again. If you can point to specific ways in which you're going to improve your score such that you will score five or more points better than you did on the last test, do it. Retake it. If, on the other hand, your math is showing you that you got, like, the 161 instead of the 163, that's tough. I might just take that 161 and roll the dice at some schools. Obviously, I can't make this decision for you, and I wouldn't want to even if I could, but I hope this does help you think things through a little bit more clearly, get a better picture in your head of what's likely and what's less likely, and clarify the decision for you. If you need more help, you know where to find me.